It's Don here from the board. Thank you for coming along and checking out another one of our videos. So in today's video, I'm going to be having a look at the Cherry desk mat. There has been a bit of interest in these desk mats for a while and you know, they look really nice being on a battle station and all that kind of stuff and it's a good surface to use as a mouse pad, bit of cushioning for your keyboard, that kind of thing. Now, I don't actually use one at home as you can see here on my desk surface because I use my surface here for a variety of different things including keycap casting in the past. And having a desk mat is always a risk because if you have a spill or an accident of some kind then you're going to be potentially ruining your mat. And as you can see you know, on the table surface here where I've had die spills and stuff like that, that has of course been an issue and thankfully I didn't actually have a mat underneath to ruin. That said, I do use a desk mat at work, but for the moment, until I got this desk mat that I've got with me here right now, uh, I've been using a gun cleaning mat, a tech mat, which the actual pattern on itself is a schematic of a firearm that I used to shoot as part of a rifle club that I was in. And, and that served me really well, but I thought, you know, now that I'm a bit more involved in keyboards and whatnot, I really wanted to get one, but being in Australia, the cost for the group buys from places like Keyclack, for example, were actually really cost prohibitive. The main reason why there's such a cost factor involved is because this desk mat is heavy. It's heavy. And so I started looking around and of course, you know, the obvious place to get them would be, for example, Taobao. Now Taobao in itself, if you understand Chinese and whatnot, is relatively cheap and easy to navigate and so forth. But for me, it was a little bit more challenging because I don't actually read or write Chinese. Um, I can speak Mandarin, but that obviously doesn't help you on the internet. Now, thankfully, I was able to have my sister-in-law bring it back into the country for me because she was over there for a while, and so she actually had it shipped to her there while she was there, and that way it actually saved me a lot of the shipping. Now, I'm not going to say how much I actually pay for it because obviously that depends on what vendors you get it from, and there are a couple of different vendors that offer essentially the same product. So, let's get down and have a look at this Cherry desk mat. Now, I got it in the stock bog boring black, um, and the reason why I did that was because if I'm going to use this at work, I don't want it to stand out too much and draw too much attention to my workstation. As nice as it would be to draw attention to my workstation at the same time, there are some things that you probably don't want to draw too much attention to yourself with. So. Let's uh, get it out of the packaging. Lots of rustling happening there. All right, let's move that aside. So the first thing is its dimensions. Uh, it's 90 centimeters by 40 centimeters by four millimeters thick. And it's got a lot of heft to it. Now I don't actually have my scales with me at the moment, um, but it's, it's definitely got a lot of heft to it. I'd say it's a couple of hundred grams. Um, and that's the reason why shipping is so expensive, not to mention the actual tube size is, is sort of quite reasonable too. Now, came with two rubber bands, so let's just uh, get the two rubber bands off. And if I try and open this up, you'll see that it actually spans much bigger than the space that you can see directly on camera. So if I actually scoot back a bit, oh, there we go, just in frame. So it's very, very big. It's quite considerable to the point where I'm actually speaking a bit louder. So I don't know if the microphone is picking up too great. But let's flip it over and, and have a look under the actual camera. So there we go. Oh, yep. Okay. Just getting that into focus. Cherry MX. It's got uh, 1953 to 2013. Accomplishments through the years. A bit of a blurb. It's got the lovely uh, schematics of the actual MX switch there, the dimensions that you can see here, a couple of different mounting options, thickness of the plates, um, and it's got flat profile keycaps as well, though I suppose they could be DSAs because it's just not showing curvature within it. Um, there's a bit of a timeline over here on what's happened, and then of course on the other side, we look at the switch mounting options, single pole, pole with LEDs, diodes, so on and so forth, and then just a bit more schematics with some sort of plate mounts. Now you can sort of see the scale of this thing is, is quite drastic because up at the top here is my full size, so that's always a good size for reference, and we can see from edge, 
let's see if I can rejiggle that. Okay, so there's the edge of the, the keyboard right there. And if I line up the edge of the mouse mat to that, we just get to the edge of where that text is. So we'll go from that text again, and uh, we run it from the edge. So it's just a bit more than two keyboards wide. Um, now, of course, my actual desk space, it's an IKEA table, it's uh, a 1.2 meter, so if I was actually putting this on, I'd have very little left, but I don't actually have the depth for it because my microphone stand, the clamp, gets in the way of actually being able to put down this desk mat. Now, the thickness of it, it claims to be four millimeters, and uh, if I hold it up vertically, you can kind of see the thickness. And what's really nice about it is the actual edge of it is also well stitched in. Um, it's been hemmed, it's been sort of overlocked with a bit of bias on that, so it should provide it with really good strength and prevent it from sort of getting all fuzzy and frayed up on that fabric on top. It's quite nice. Um, and the underside of this is also quite textured. It's got a really nice grippy sort of texture that you can see right there. So I'd expect that once you've actually laid this down on a table, it's not really going to slip anywhere at all. Now, besides that, you'd probably say, well, you're not really going to be able to have very much else in this review. But what I do want to do is I want to test if it has any sound dampening properties. Of course, I'm not really going to be able to lay this out completely on the table. But what I can do instead is I can just have enough of that width, maybe this way. And then I'll put the keyboard on top and I'll do a bit of typing. And then we can see maybe here or not here if there's any actual differences in dampening. Okay. So first of all, I'm just going to uh, sit that on my lap. Let's bring my, uh, my Philco down. Now, of course, for those who are not super familiar with my uh, stock keyboard that I have here, this is a Philco Magis Touch 2 with Cherry MX Blue switches that has hard O-rings installed. So these aren't soft marshy O-rings. These are clear silicon O-rings that I got really cheap on eBay. Um, and so you're not going to hear a lot of the bottoming out sound and it's a lot more of the actual clicky sound. So I'm just going to drop the microphone. We're going to do a little bit of random typing, just a notepad so you get an idea of what the sound is like. Um, and then we'll pop the mat on. So let me just open up notepad. There we go. I'm going to drop in the microphone down. Let's do some random typing. Uh, okay, so that was a very quick short sample. So let's uh, just lift that temporarily out of the way. Of course, I can't actually see what I'm doing because Notepad is covering the, uh, the stream view but that's okay. You get to see what I'm doing. Let's just put that down, smooth out a little bit, and then let's put it back on. All right, so let's see if, uh, just roll that up over there. So it doesn't end up dragging the rest of the mat off the table somehow. That would not be entertaining. Or maybe it would be entertaining just in a completely different way. And so now, on top of the mat, let's see if it makes any difference in sound. So to my ears, it doesn't actually sound like it's making much difference at all. Um, I don't know if it's something that you can hear a little bit of difference or not. Um, but for the sake of completeness, I'm actually going to repeat the same test with um, my two top ray keyboards just because, well, you know, sound, pinging, vibration, that kind of stuff. Like the Philco is a very solid keyboard. It's a very heavy keyboard. It has a steel plate in it. And so vibrations and dampenings in general are probably actually pretty good. You don't really get much ping in it. Whereas something that's a little bit lighter, you might expect to hear maybe some sound differences. I'm not 100% sure, but of course, that's why we're doing this. So the uh, first candidate is the old trusty HHKB stock, feet down, nothing more to it. And 
then let's put uh, a bit of the mat underneath. Now, because this is a 60%, of course, I can just go like that. Now, interestingly, that actually did sound quieter to me. Uh, I guess it's up to you if you heard a difference, but I do feel that with the top ray keyboard uh, with the HHKB, it was actually quieter. It might be because of the fact that being the plastic ABS shell on this, it certainly has more vibrations transferring to it to the table surface, whereas being on top of the mat, it does help dull that down. And of course, let's swap over to uh, the other one, which is my old Leopold FC660C. So once again, feet down. Now it does have rubber feet as well, so I would expect the dampening is to be relatively decent on this. Now by default it does actually sound a lot more dull and muted because it does actually have that plate in there. It's very hefty by its natural self. So let's just put the desk mat back on top and get the keyboard on top of that and go again. Now that was actually really interesting to me from where I'm sitting. I don't know how that's coming across on the microphone for you, but it actually sounds like the Leopold loses a lot of its Fock reverb. Um, and it sounds quieter yet again. So I'm just gonna take that off. I'm not gonna drop the microphone. Yeah, okay, so it definitely loses a lot of that Fock sound um, by being on top of the mat. It's a lot quieter on the alphas with it. So there you go. That mat actually does have quite a noticeable dampening effect on the top right keyboards. Not so much on the cherry switches. I would not have actually 100% guessed that, but um, it's a, I suppose, a pleasant, unexpected surprise. So there you go. Um, it's nice. It's a very good size, as as we can sort of, you know, appreciate and see. It's practically almost shoulder length, um, or shoulder width, sorry, for me. And uh, goes to show I've got relatively narrow shoulders, huh? Good amount of heft. I would say it's something that you could, you know, really enjoy and, and get out. Um, I will take it to work and, and I'll put it over on my desk, but I will, of course, have to rearrange my desk so that it'll fit because at the moment I've rearranged my desk and the tech mat that I use is actually not as deep compared to this cherry one. It's only 30 centimeters so I've got to find another 10 centimeters and you know move some things around. But that's uh, that's the desk mat from Taobao. I think it was pretty good value all things considering. It wasn't as great value if I had to pay shipping but I know that there are some group buys that are happening right now at the time of recording for this video. There's an interest check to have more of these cherry mats. And I think they're in the order of around 30 something US shipped within the US, which, you know, it's a reasonable price. You might be able to get cheaper if you bought it straight from Taobao, even if you use one of their proxies, um, you know, something like Superbuy, or if you just had friends who knew how to navigate and, and read what's going on with Taobao and buy direct. So that pretty much wraps up for the review of this cherry desk mat. Now, before we sort of sign off on this video, I just want to remind people, of course, that we are doing another giveaway at 500 subscribers, 600 subscribers, and 700 subscribers. Right now, at the time of making this video, we are at 472 subscribers. So, if you really want to get involved, please hit like on this video. Please hit like on all of my other videos if you did like the content and that way it'll help our channel grow because with YouTube's algorithms the more likes you get the more likely it's going to be recommended on front page for other people 
um, especially because we're sort of tagged in with sort of the whole science and technology and that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, obviously when you subscribe. Now I'm hoping to do a couple of live streams in the future of building uh, some keyboards. I've been dragging on in getting some solder and it hasn't come through eBay so I've had to basically just knuckle down and get some locally. So hopefully I'll be able to get that this week and then I'll be able to start building the gherkin and my let's split. And then of course on top of that I've also got a practice SMD kit so we can all watch how bad I am at soldering SMDs. So if you do like this video please 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 hit like. If you liked all of my other videos go back check them out again hit like. If you haven't subscribed, I would really love and appreciate your subscribe as well. So thank you very much for coming along and checking out this video. Fortunately, my little one is actually uh, in bed right now. She's teething and uh, she needs as much sleep as she can so she can't feature today. But hopefully she'll be back for another video soon. And with that, as always, until next time, happy clacking.